Chapter 6, Dhyana Yoga Text 47 Yoginam api sarvesham mudgate nantar atmana Shadhavan vajate yomang same yukta tamomataha And of all yogis, the one with great faith who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. Purport The word budgete is significant here. Budgete has its root in the verb budge, which is used when there is need of service. The English word worship cannot be used in the same sense as budge. Worship means to adore or to show respect and honor to the worthy one. But service with love and faith is especially meant for the supreme personality of Godhead. One can avoid worshiping a respectable man or a demigod and be called discourteous, but one cannot avoid serving the Supreme Lord without being thoroughly condemned. Every living entity is part and parcel of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and thus every living entity is intended to serve the Supreme Lord by his own constitution. Failing to do this, he falls down. The Bhagavatam 11.5.3 confirms this as follows. Yesham purusham sakshad atma prabhavamishwaram nabhajantya vajananti stanan drashta patantyadha Anyone who does not render service and neglects his duty unto the primeval Lord, who is the source of all living entities, will certainly fall down from his constitutional position. In this verse also the word bhajanti is used. Therefore, bhajanti is applicable to the Supreme Lord only, whereas the word worship can be applied to demigods or to any other common living entity. The word of ajananti used in this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam is also found in the Bhagavad Gita. Vajananti Mamudha. Only the fools and rascals deride the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. Such fools take it upon themselves to write commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita without an attitude of service to the Lord. Consequently, they cannot properly distinguish between the word bhajanti and the word worship. The culmination of all kinds of yoga practices lies in bhakti yoga. All other yogas are but means to come to the point of bhakti in bhakti yoga. Yoga actually means bhakti yoga. All other yogas are progressions toward the destination of bhakti yoga. From the beginning of karma yoga to the end of bhakti yoga is a long way to self-realization. Karma yoga, without food to results, is the beginning of this path. When karma yoga increases in knowledge and renunciation, the stage is called jnana yoga. When jnana yoga increases in meditation on the supersoul by different physical processes, and the mind is on him, it is called ashtanga yoga. And when one surpasses the ashtanga yoga and comes to the point of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, it is called bhakti yoga, the culmination. Factually, bhakti yoga is the ultimate goal, but to analyze bhakti yoga minutely, one has to understand these other yogas. The yogi who is progressive is therefore on the path of eternal good fortune. One who sticks to a particular point and does not make further progress is called by that particular name. Karma yogi, jnana yogi, or dhyana yogi, raja yogi, hatha yogi, etc. If one is fortunate enough to come to the point of bhakti yoga, it is to be understood that he has surpassed all other yogas. Therefore, to become Krishna conscious is the highest stage of yoga, just as when we speak of Himalayan, we refer to the world's highest mountains, of which the highest peak, Mount Everest, is considered to be the culmination. It is by great fortune that one comes to Krishna consciousness on the path of bhakti yoga, to become well situated according to the Vedic direction. The ideal yogi concentrates his attention on Krishna, who is called Shamasundar, who is as beautifully colored as a cloud, whose lotus-like face is as effulgent as the sun, whose dress is brilliant with jewels, and whose body is flower-garlanded. Illuminating all sides is his gorgeous luster, which is called the Brahma Jyoti. 
He incarnates in different forms such as Rama, Nrsimha, Varaha and Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he descends like a human being as the son of Mother Yashoda. And he is known as Krishna, Govinda and Vasudev. He is the perfect child, husband, friend and master. And he is full with all opulences and transcendental qualities. If one remains fully conscious of these features of the Lord, he is called the highest yogi. This stage of highest perfection in yoga can be attained only by bhakti yoga, as is confirmed in all Vedic literature. Yasya deve para bhakti, yata deve tata guru, and tasyaite katita yarta, prakashante mahatmanaha. Only unto those great souls who have implicit faith in both the Lord and the spiritual master are all the imports of Vedic knowledge automatically revealed. Shvetashvatara Upanishad 6.23 Bhaktarasya bhajanam tad iha mutro padi narasye namushmin manakalpanam etadeva naishkarmyam Bhakti means devotional service to the Lord which is free from desire for material profit either in this life or in the next. Devoid of such inclinations, one should fully absorb the mind in the Supreme. That is the purpose of Naishkarmya. Gopal Tapani Upanishad 115 These are some of the means for performance of bhakti or Krishna consciousness, the highest perfectional stage of the yoga system.